Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Now, like my previous episodes, I'll do my best with the pronunciations here. I relied on Google Translate to provide them and I created my own phonetic spellings to help me do my best. I'll definitely stumble a bit, but it should sound correct. I'll put the actual words in the lower third. Now today's show is the third free sample wine I received for review from the Alentejo region of Portugal. It comes from the Esperam winery. Fun fact, Esperam is Portuguese for spur. Espoela, or I had it down as espula, but I think it's espoela, that's how, I, that's how I learned it, is one of the words in Spanish for spur also. Now, I've reviewed wine from here a few times over the years, and they've always been solid, at least from this winery. Now I'll cover a bit of the background for the winery. The winery is built on the site of an old defensive tower in Montserrat. It was built in 1267 after the ouster of the Muslims from the region in 1232. This is in the region Hegengos. I know it seems really weird, but R's are pronounced H's in Portuguese for the most part. So the Hegengos subregion of Alentejo. It appears that it was purchased in 1973 after it had been owned by many, many people. Their first vintage was 1985. Eight years later, they bought an olive oil business that is now called Esperon Azeches. Again, sounds really weird, but this was called Azeches, which means olives, if I remember correctly. At their site and in the area in general, there are quite a few ancient complexes dating between, check it out, 2000 to 4500 BC. They now have several labels and make wine from the Alentejo and the Douro uh, region. They also list some of their experimental wines for people to see the kinds of things that they're playing around with. And this is pretty cool. And they also have a restaurant on site. They practice an integrated system of farming that includes using other animals for pest management rather than pesticides and composting. They have also invested in two solar farms to eventually be self-sufficient. They are a gravity winery in that they reduce energy needs by not needing pumps. The underground cellars don't need any temperature control at their main winery. Their other one, Quinta dos Mosas, in the Douro region, has an original and innovative system that uses the water from the mines to heat and cool the radiating floors through the cellars to control the temperature and humidity with great energy efficiency. All right, so what are the stats for the wine? This is the 2016 Edoja de Esperam Chintu Reserva, about $24 suggested retail. It is in the Alentejo DOP, 40% Aragones, 30% Alicante Boucher, 20% Trincadera, and 10% Cabernet Sauvignon. Each variety is fermented separately. Average vineyard age is 17 years. It is a granite schist soil with clay and loam aged 12 months in 60% American and 40% French oak, aged eight months in the bottle before release. The ABV is 14.5%, total acidity is 6.3 grams per liter, pH is 3.55, and the residual sugar is 2.5 grams per liter. So we are talking a dry wine here. Now it may come across as sweet, I'm about to find that out. Woo. That's a tough one. It's probably gonna be hard to take this uh, needle out of the cork. All right, I'm powering through. It's really late. I took up a lot of time on the episode that you're never gonna see. Hopefully, I'll either be either be able to get a, a free tasting kit from that one, or I'll just flat out just buy one. All right. Well, unusual smell on that. Not a bad smell. 
I mean, it really just kind of smell like smelled like fermenting wine, like you're in the winery when during fermentation. Maybe a little smoky. I get more blue fruit than anything else, like the blueberry, boysenberry, huckleberry. I wonder if Alicante is just a blue-dominated uh, fruit wine, or you know, the the wines made from that grape from that grape are dominated by blue or fruit because I seem to get blue fruit a lot on these wines. Blackberry, raspberry. I mean, this really reminds me of Zinfandel. Like each, each wine so far has like this Zinfandel quality to it. And this one actually has a higher alcohol, 14.5%, whereas the other ones were a lower alcohol. So I wonder if I was given this blind, if I would call it like Zinfandel. Fresh potting soil, a little bit of, not as much of the sweet tobaccos as some of the other ones I've been doing, but there's a touch of that like cigar box maybe. A little bit of vanilla. Now, I don't know how much of this oak is new and used. It just said, you know, the percentages of this type of oak. But it smells like there's some new oak in here. Makes a little more sense. It's a higher, higher price wine. Let's just taste it. I just want a lot. It's kind of like straddles that Zinfandel Cabernet Sauvignon type of type of camp there. Like if I was being blinded on this, I would put this in kind of like it's like North Coast California, maybe like a Zinfandel, like a Dry Creek, maybe like a Sonoma. Uh, Cab Merlot blend, you know, or like a Syrah going on there. I don't really get like any black pepper or anything like that, but there's a really luscious of fruit. It's not a huge amount of like new oak aromas and flavors, but there's definitely new oak in this. I, I think, I don't know, I might be wrong, but it smells like there's a decent amount of new oak. 2.5 grams per liter on the, on the residual sugar. It doesn't taste sweet, like sugary sweet, but you get a ripeness of fruit. So some people will call this not a sweet wine, but like a fruity wine. It tastes really good. You know, the blueberry, the blackberry, raspberry, boysenberry, huckleberry, like the blue dominated fruit on this. I can feel the alcohol a little bit right now. Does it have a little bit of a burn going on there? I think there's like birds outside, which is weird because it's like freaking 322 in the morning. But sometimes birds are like active in the middle of the night. I don't understand. Especially in the winter time. The cedar box is coming through. Like polished wood. A collection of spices, you know, all spice, baking spices. It is super tasty. Absolutely super tasty. If you can find this wine, totally get it. All right, so that's gonna do it for uh, today. Again, if you are enjoying what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button down there and subscribe, and then tell your friends. And until next time.